Hello, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. And today we are taking a look at the first stages of Osriel. So before we get started, roll those credits. Okay, welcome back. So today we're taking a look at Osriel. So this is a fantastic model from a, a Patreon called B3D Zerk, which for the benefits of this video, I'm gonna to continue to call Berserk, but Berserk 3D ultimately. Uh, my understanding is it's a sister Patreon of the Wicked um, Patreon that also exists. Wicked focuses primarily on Marvel characters, Berserk focuses more on DC and something that he's doing at the moment that I really like is he's putting out models that are of contextually smaller but still really cool characters. So for those who aren't aware, Osriel is from the Batman universe. Um, he's, he, when he's finished, he looks very much um, sort of like a Batman style crusader kind of thing. Um, for those who played some of the Arkham Knight games, Osriel features in it as someone who potentially could replace Batman. But the difference is, is Osriel is an anti-hero and Osriel does kill. Um, now, it's an incredibly intricate model that Berserk has gone through and done. So some of the things, so the way that he cuts and keys things really is brilliant. He hides things in join lines and he hides things in organic cuts that makes putting him together really, really easy. Um, there are a couple of things that I wanna say about this. Obviously, I have scaled this guy up. So we are looking, with the sword on, we are looking at 975 tall. We're looking at about 370 wide, and we're looking at about 700 millimeters deep so he is not small under normal circumstances he would be half this size i did scale it by 200 percent because you know i hate myself and i think i've got more space in my office than i actually do um that being said he is cut and keyed fantastically if you do him original size when you blow him up you have to cut him a little bit more because some of his pieces are designed to fit on a Ender 3 style um, sized of printer, and obviously you're going double that build volume, and an Ender 3 isn't half the build volume of, say, a Sidewinder. So I've had to do a few cuts myself. I'm not as good at cutting and keying as uh, as Berserk is, clearly. So, um, so there are a couple of cuts that I basically did in Fusion 360, or sorry, in Netfab, um, and, uh, and they're basically just linear cuts, which, comes with its own issues because, you know, we've got a few lines down the front of him and specifically in the cape. Capes are hard. I dislike capes. Now, technically speaking, you probably could actually get away with printing Osriel without his cape if you wanted to. Um, but I decided to print the cape. I've been trying to, where possible, make my own fabric capes because they drape much better, but also they're just, they're just easier. Um, Osriel's cape's a little different because Osriel's cape, as you can see, comes in multiple sections and it almost looks like ribbons. Um, reminds me a little bit of the, um, of the ribbons you get on uh, Warhammer and, uh, and Space Marines when they've got the commendations and they've got the, uh, they've got the scripture from, from the God King. Um, they remind me a little bit of that, of the sort of the ribbon that's on there. I've obviously already painted these, and I've obviously already painted the base. I haven't yet painted Osriel, because he is big. So, um, <laughs> so with that in mind, let's take a quick 360 of the model, and you can take a look and see what he looks like.
Okay, so as you can see, there's so much detail. Now, at the moment, he has a belt belt. He has a he has a 3D printer um, belt that I had lying about holding him into the model. Uh, that's because I haven't glued him into his keys yet um, because I need to paint him. Um, one thing I will say about Berserk's models is quite often you need to assemble them in a certain order. Um, so, for example, what I should have done, in theory, is painted all of these parts separately and then his cutting and keying is so good that you would actually be able to assemble it painted and it goes together in a certain order so this piece of, of cape goes on his shoulders but there are ridges down each side of of this top piece that goes into his into his top and basically the arms lock into this to hold this in place at the top um, it's a really cool design. It unfortunately doesn't suit me particularly well, and I've had to modify some of these parts slightly with a Dremel so I can still fit them where I need to. Um, in an ideal world, I would have I would have just painted him in the separate parts and put him together, but because I scaled him, that really wasn't going to be possible. Um, so I, I, you know, I carried on. I, I've started painting parts of him. I'm waiting for my black primer to come so I can do my zenithal highlights on him and then I can and then I can start painting him in a bit more earnest detail. But I mean things like the sword has come out absolutely fantastically. So you can see it's actually pretty straight and uh, and this I had to cut into three sections. So I had to cut it, cut it at the cross guard and cut it just above here. I used Repliflow's uh, Replicotes PLA stick on this. Um, and I tell you what, like you cannot, you cannot tell a where I used it, where the join was, um, because there's two joins in this, and I couldn't even tell you where one of them was. Um, and b, uh, it is incredibly strong on that joint. Uh, so PLA stick, as we've covered before on the channel, is a bit like uh, Magigoo, and it's a chemical bonding agent. It melts the PLA effectively, and it chemically bonds the two surfaces together, which means you're more likely to pull apart actual layers than you are those two surfaces. Um, once I have glued him in place with the PLA stick, this guy won't be moving anywhere. But I won't be gluing him in place until at the very least I've finished painting his legs um, so that the whole thing stays together really nicely. Um, I've really, I, I did use a fair amount of Repliflow on this. So I had some issues where, um, where I had some layer lines. Um, those layer lines, I just didn't want to spend the time sanding them because you lose a lot of detail. I was really impressed when I put the Repliflow on this that I didn't lose any detail. Um, I, I, I managed to retain surface textures even though I was smoothing it out. And I don't really understand how that level of voodoo magic works because it hid my layer lines but kept the textures. So... You, you, if you can tell me how that's worked, I don't know. But all the runes on his armour and everything are still there. Um, all the detail that makes this model awesome is still in this. Um, and I've also managed to hide a large number of the layer lines and my support interface layers. I had to orientate this all in a certain way when I was printing it because of just because of trying to get it to stick to the bed. Um, that made perfect sense in a getting it to print way, but... It didn't make a lot of sense when it came to the, oh, this is how I want it to look sort of way. Um, so I didn't really, I, I had a few, I had a few sort of surface artifacts and things like that from that support interface layer. Um, I am going to paint this guy and there'll be another video coming of him soon. But as you can see, he's a big project. So it might take me a little bit of time to finish. And I thought I'd do an update on, uh, on exactly what we're doing. We've got a couple of other big projects coming up on the channel as well. So we're still doing the, um, the Chevy Impala from Gambody. That's going to be really cool. Replicote have actually done a spray coat of the, on, the, uh, on the car for us for that. And that's going to look stunning. We're really, really excited about how that's going to come out. Um, and then we're also going to have this guy. We've got many, many more reviews coming. And we've got some big stuff coming on the channel. So keep your eyes peeled on that. Um, Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, I will put the link to Berserk's Patreon in the video description. 
absolutely go and check him out because this is just one of the many models he's done. They're really, really cool and you should definitely go and check them out. His Patreon is not expensive. I think it's about $8.99 a month. And my God, like the stuff you get for that. This is actually part of a two-part diorama. There's another half that goes onto this that is a Nightwing. Um, I'm not doing that model <laughs> because I don't have over a metre <laughs> of space to, in, to have both of them. But the Nightwing model is super cool as well. So definitely go and check out his Patreon. Keep an eye on the channel for some updates on when we finish him. Thanks very much for watching. Stay safe.